This illustration further talks about uh, grounding a separately derived alternating current systems in accordance with NEC 250.30, and we're going to focus on the informational note listed there. Uh, many times, even today, there are two questions that uh, I get quite often that uh, probably I shouldn't get this late in the game, but they want to know uh, how do you classify a generator as separately derived systems or non separately derived systems? And then they want to know just exactly how you classify the generator. Well, uh, in the 2017 edition, along with the revision, of the 2020, the information on note one to 250.30 plainly says it all deals with the grounded conductor from the generator in the transfer switch. So all you and I as electricians or designers, uh, or as inspectors for that matter, have to remember, do they switch the grounded conductor with the ungrounded conductors? And if the answer is yes, then the information on note one to 250.30 says you ground the generator. But if they do not switch that grounded conductor and it ties into a bar that is grounded to the service ground and also back, in my opinion, to the utility ground, then you don't ground the generator. The generator is considered grounded through the service equipment ground uh, uh, according to the informational note one. Now, if you want to know what type of generator you have, then it's either a portable generator in accordance with 250.24a, where you would uh, ground all the U grounds of your receptacles to the frame of the generator. Or you'd go to 700.2, and if the loads were present that are listed in 700.2 in that informational note, then you could classify it as an emergency generator and all the wiring would comply with Article 700. However, if you could delete and have other systems feeding some of those emergency loads such as egress and uh, emergency and so forth, lighting and that kind of thing, then you could classify it as a 701.2 informational note generator and that would be a legally required standby generator. And if you could uh, remove some of those loads and serve them by other means, then you could classify it an optional standby generator. Now let's talk about the difference in the legally required standby generator. Well, it's wired by Article 701. You can bring it on in 60 seconds. And you can also have a 15 minute delay and you can mix the wiring with the general wiring. But if it's an emergency generator in 700.2 informational note, you cannot mix the wiring with the uh, general wiring. It has to be separated, uh, run uh, separate, uh, and you have to bring it on within 10 seconds and you gotta bring it on automatically. If it's an optional standby generator, you can bring it on uh, automatically. You can bring it on manually. You can design it for the loads that you want it to supply. Or you could have load management with it. Or you could just feed all the loads at one time. So if it's an optional standby generator in 702.2 informational note, you have a lot of privileges there. The owner can tell you as the designer what they want to supply, and you can provide it. Not so with 700 and 701. They have to be brought on automatically. They have a time frame, and then they have a delay frame that you have to deal with. So it's either 700, Article 700 for emergency, 701 for legally required standby, or 702 for optional. And then if you have just a portable generator, 250.34A, and if it's on a vehicle, 250.24B is in boy. Now that covers that. But now if the generator you see in this illustration is permanently installed, then under the transfer switch, you have to look at 250.35A and B.
What does that say? What does it state? Do you have an overcurrent device protecting the conductors at the generator ahead of the conductors routed over there or under certain conditions permissible by the manufacturer? Do you not have an overcurrent device at the generator and you don't have an overcurrent device ahead of those conductors? So you have to use A or B to 250.35 if it is a permanently installed generator. But 250.30, informational note one and two, deals with classifying the generator as separately derived or non-separately derived. So 250.30 and 250.35 work together for a separately derived or a non-separately derived generator. And that's what this illustration is illustrating.